Are you using or considering using Notion to operate a large organization? Notion can act as your team's central knowledge hub. Whether you're already using Notion for documentation or looking to get started, we thought we'd show you a few things that can make your workspace even more solid and efficient. In this video, we'll explore how page headings and backlinking can help call attention to important information, how keeping information in the same place leads to clarity across all teams, and we'll delve deeper into the way that page sharing works. Here's the sidebar of a fictional company called Acme Inc. Ideally, your team sidebar would look pretty similar. For example, you could already have your information siloed into different top-level pages for each department. Either way, this is something we recommend you do. Create a home page or team wiki for every vertical and use it to store processes, best practices, or OKRs, any information relevant to the team. In this case, Acme boasts a team wiki for product, another one for CX, then for marketing, sales and success, and people. This homepage is host to information that concerns all team members. As you can see, this space serves as a wiki or knowledge base, that is, a place to neatly store information for everyone within the org to access. This general onboarding page documents everything that a new hire must know or provide before they join Acme, from their preferred laptop to their work email or Slack. Notice that the information is clearly separated by headings and subheadings, making it easy to digest. Since this document is quite long, you may want to give your readers a heads up of what it contains and allow them to jump to the information they want. To achieve this, add a table of contents at the top of your page. Hit the forward slash key, followed by the letters TOC, then press enter. As easy as that. Notice that large size, also called H1 headings, appear as top level links, while other headings are nested accordingly. As you use Notion for more and more things, your workspace will grow to hold thousands of pages, and you will often find the need to link related pages together. For example, this section mentions the company's team directory. Why not replace the text with a link to that page? To do this, simply type the at key, followed by the name of the page, and soon it will show up in the dropdown. Click on the page name, and now your document boasts a link to the original team directory. Now, the new hire needs only click on team directory, and they will be directed to the database in question, without having to browse for it themselves. Page links can also help ensure that important documents are being read or consulted. Plus, anytime you link a page, a backlink will be added to the page you linked. To learn more about links and backlinks, have a look at this video. It may happen that you will want to sync sections of pages across multiple locations in your workspace. For example, what if we wanted to feature the company's mission and vision at the top of this general onboarding page? We would have to go to the Mission, Vision, and Values page, select the sections we want, and copy it to your clipboard by hitting Command-C. Let's go back to our page, paste in the content, then select Paste and Sync. Your content is now synced. Consequently, the changes made to this text, whether in the original page or here, will be updated in real time. This saves you from having many outdated versions of the same content. As teams grow, each will naturally develop their own idiosyncratic ways of operating. However, creating standardized containers for pages and templates for processes can be extremely beneficial to leaders who need to get a bird's eye view and employees who want to better understand what others are working on. For instance, you could have a docs database that stores procedural knowledge or how-to guides. Since this information will likely be used by people from different teams, it makes sense to keep it all in the same place. A docs database could include a useful folio like this brand guide. This document explains Acme's branding in great detail in the hopes of creating consistency in how everyone talks about the product. You may also use this database to store company-wide policies like this vacation policy. This is a place where you can document everything to do with time off for employees and avoid unnecessary exchanges over Slack and email. Additionally, you could create how-to docs like this one, which explains to readers how they can use the Stripe tool for work. For a vast table like this, it can be very useful to create different views of the same database and make use of filters and sorts to showcase snippets of data. For example, this board view groups docs by their owners, while you can see the same tasks listed by team. What's more, 
This list displays all the docs created by me. Specifically, me is the person whose account is being used when viewing this database. Since we are currently logged in as Mary Cassatt, this filter is only displaying docs created by Mary. But if Claude Monet were to view the same database, he would see the docs that he himself created. Finally, you may decide to sort your data in alphabetical order or display the latest edited docs at the top. Just play around with both dropdowns to see all sorting possibilities. Now, this other shared database contains the notes taken during all meetings held at the company, making it easy for anyone to see what was discussed asynchronously, as well as the decisions made and actions taken. In the case of meetings that require recurrent sections like weekly syncs, you may want to repeat the structure of your notes, perhaps divide them into sections like these. Instead of recreating the structure every time, try creating a database template instead. Manually select the content you'd like to replicate and copy it to your clipboard. Next, click on the downwards arrow next to the blue New button, then on New Template. You can name your template at the top, give it an icon if you wish, and fill out relevant properties. Then paste the content you just copied inside the body of the page. Voila! To save this template, simply click out of the page. If you click on the downwards arrow, you'll see your new template appear in the dropdown, alongside all other existing database templates. Click on it, and this will add a new entry with all pre-existing content to the database. Give your page a title, and you're ready to go. With shortcuts like these, you'll have no trouble finding voluntary note takers. Earlier in this video, we said we would explain in greater detail Notion sharing settings, and explain them we will. You will sometimes find it useful to keep a Notion page private to a limited group of people, especially if the content is still work in progress. Take this CX Career Paths and Growth doc, for example. If you click on its Share menu, you'll see that by default, all Workspace members have full access to this page. This means that everyone can edit its content and share it with other people who are outside the team. To restrict the page's access to a select few, click on Full Access, and this dropdown will pop up, giving you a choice of access levels. Pick the No Access option, then click on Restrict Access. Now, the only person who has access to this document is you, or in this case, Mary Cassatt, as we are currently using her Notion account. The next thing to do is to decide who you want to share this page with. Click on Invite and select these people here. They can be a pre-configured group of folks, such as all CX team members or colleagues whose names you can manually type in the search bar. If the person you want to add is external to the team, you'll need to add their email. Now click on Full Access to decide whether you want your peers to have full access to the page or lower levels of access, such as only being able to comment or view. Let's select Can Edit, then Invite. You can see your page guest's name appear here with a guest badge next to it. This means that the guest is not a member of this workspace. Rather, they only have access to this one page. This doc now only exists for the four of you, and you can resume work on it without having others glance in. Once the page is ready to be broadcast to everyone, you can always restore it back to its initial sharing settings by clicking on Restore at the top right of the sharing menu. Then restore access. Lastly, to avoid any accidental changes to the page, click on the page's three dot menu and select Lock Page. With more and more people joining the team, it can be easy to lose track of who has access to what. If that's your case, try going to Settings and Members, then clicking on the Members tab. As a workspace admin, you can grant admin access to any team member here and create, edit, or delete groups there. See all workspace guests in this tab, as well as the pages that are shared with them. Should any more doubts arise about sharing and permissions, we recommend you check out our Help Center article about this topic. And that's all for this tutorial. You should now grasp how to organize your Notion workspace into team wikis and collective databases, see the appeal of linking pages together, and know your way around page sharing settings. We hope you will use this knowledge to perhaps alter what you already have and make it even better. 
Because as your team changes and grows, Notion changes and grows with you. Thank you.